The Land-Grant College Act of 1862, or the Morrill Act as it is commonly known, had its origins in America's Northeast and Midwest. Initially, the focus was on scientific and industrial education, but the application of science and technology to agriculture soon became a core concept of the land-grant movement. Justin Smith Morrill, a Republican senator from Vermont, introduced a bill to support colleges for the benefit of agriculture and mechanic arts in 1857. Morrill himself never attended college, but he was a horticultural enthusiast with a keen interest in the sciences. The bill passed both houses of Congress, but the act was vetoed by President James Buchanan. Opposition to the act came largely from the southern states where there was very little industry. The bill was reintroduced in 1862. This time the southern states were not in Congress to protest, and Congress had a sympathetic president in Abraham Lincoln. President Lincoln signed the act into law on July 2, 1862. The land-grant colleges were a new breed of school, a hybrid of vocational and liberal arts education. They were also different because they sought to draw in what Senator Morrill referred to as the sons of toil. They soon found that the daughters of toil were also interested in a college education. The intent of the act was to create not only a better farmer or mechanic, but also to make him a better, more enlightened citizen. The purpose is embodied in the mottos of some of the land-grant colleges, learning and labor at the University of Illinois, and education for citizenship at Ohio State University. The latter is similar to the University of Florida's motto, and the character of its citizens is the strength of the state. Florida, of course, was not participating in any federal programs in 1862. When the Civil War ended in 1865, Florida and the other former members of the Confederacy were brought into the land-grant network. Florida chartered its college in 1870, but it was not until 1884 that the college opened its doors in Lake City. The Florida Agricultural College was the state's first public college and remained the state's only public college until 1901 when the Florida State College opened in Tallahassee. In 1903, the Florida Agricultural College became the University of Florida and was relocated to Gainesville in 1906 after passage of the Buckman Act in 1905. The Morrill Act broadened our notion of who should attend college. Still, the percentage of college graduates in the total population remained relatively low. Enrollment at the University of Florida never exceeded 3,500 students prior to World War II. It wasn't until 1944, with the passage of the Servicemen's Readjustment Act, or as we know it, the GI Bill, that the nation embraced the idea of mass higher education. The GI Bill and later the Pell Grant were the logical culmination of the Morrill Act. Each act further democratized higher education. 